uh, called Todd, Mc, uh, Todd Barclay uh, <laughs> five minutes. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, I just wanted to start by um, welcoming everybody back after the New Year break and just saying how uh, what such a pleasure it is to be part of a united, excited, strong National Party caucus that support our leader and our deputy leader. It's a shame that the uh, same can't be said for the other side of the House and it's a shame that um, they can't uh, unite themselves the same way that we have. Today I wanted to focus a little bit on um, education and the importance that a ed good education brings um, in giving kids the best start to life. I particularly wanted to remind New Zealanders of the mess that the Labor, previous Labor government left the portfolio in when we inherited it uh, six years ago. Well, since we came in, since we've entered government, we've increased spending on education by 45 per cent. We now spend more on education than MSD and police combined. Unlike the Labor, uh, previous Labor government, we're looking at all components of the education system into a pipeline. Since we've entered into government, we've more than doubled spending on early childhood education. That equals what we spend on the police budget. When we took over, there were 93.6 per cent of um, school starters who had participated in ECE. We've increased that to 96.1 per cent, and if we've got a target of 98 per cent. That's 6,500 more kids entering early childhood education before they start school. And in the primary sector, we've set targets through the introduction of national standards. We want 85 per cent of kids um, achieving uh, a level of reading, writing and maths. Um, before they exit out into the secondary uh, sector. And uh, currently we're at 77.9% for reading, 70.6% for writing, and 74.6% for maths. And moving on to the secondary sector, Mr Speaker, we've uh, made great gains in NCEA. Sure, the Labor Party may have introduced uh, NCEA, but after they introduced it, they did nothing with it. There was 68% participation rate uh, achievement at NCA Level 2 when we took over. We've increased that to 79 per cent and we've got a target of 85 per cent, so we're well on track. Then moving on to Level 4, post-school qualification. Uh, when we inherited uh, government, there were 53.3 per cent of 25 to 35 year olds who held NCQA Level 4 or equivalent. We've increased that to 54.7 per cent and we've almost met our target of 55 per cent one year early. Mr Speaker, we've, uh, since we've come into government, we've been focused on implementing a seamless transition throughout each sector of the education uh, pipeline. And that leads on to the, an investment approach that, that we're taking in the social sector more generally. I want to use two examples that Bill English has uh, cited during the campaign last year. And the first is in relation to teens, teen sole parents on benefits. Mr Speaker, we have 2,600 of these uh, people in our country. They're all, um, these are classified as under the age of 20, and if you're in this category, the average expectancy you'll spend on a benefit is 20 years, um, with a net uh, present value of cost to the taxpayer of $250,000 per person. So instead, we're choosing to spend $7,000 a, uh, a year on each of these people through uh, implementing a so, uh, supervising adult and putting them into their lives, uh, making sure that these people are um, getting re-engaged into education, um, a, a tolerance level um, around budgeting and um, providing them with other services that well equips them for modern society. And if we achieve that, um, and if they achieve a post-school qualification, the average expectancy they'll spend on a benefit reduces from 20 years down to seven years, and that saves the taxpayer millions of dollars. The second group is the, uh, a group of um, 2,000 kids that are currently in the um, toughest client group, if you like, of government going forward. These 2,000 kids currently, uh, there was an analysis done of 30 years uh, of their previous family records and uh, based on the appearance interaction with government, their current interaction of government, and we have valued the um, projected expenditure on them over their lifetime through court costs alone uh, and, sorry, uh, prison costs at $750 million. So uh, what we're deciding to do instead is re-engage them back in education, ensure that they complete their education, uh, enter the workforce in, with a, an ability to get a job and not have to go onto a benefit so that they don't fall into the, a justice trap and offend and enter the justice system. Mr Speaker, these sole parents on benefits and the toughest clients um, that are uh, ch male children that are currently in the school sector, if we can re-engage them, get them back on track through education, 
uh, we'll be doing them and New Zealand a great service. Thank you. Thank you.